I will introduce myself. Uh, I suspect that most of you know me, but uh, I'm Steve Gallagher, uh, general cat herder and uh, misanthrope. Uh, Mohan uh, Baddu, did I get it right that time? Cool. Uh, is our uh, Fedora, uh, Fedora release engineering lead, and uh, we'll be talking today about how, how a uh, how a YAML file turns into modularity unicorns. Say hello, Mohan. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'll skip and welcome you. Yeah, you. You need to use the mic or it's not recorded. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, as Stephen was uh, saying, um, I'm Mohan Badu. I work as a release engineer for Fedora. And uh, we are here to talk about how you can build modules and how they will be available in Fedora uh, repos. So first part is how you can build them. And uh, Stephen is going to help you out with that. All right. So uh, some of you may have come to my earlier talk where I explained why you might want to build a module. So I'm not going to uh, cover that again. Let's assume uh, for the moment that you've decided that this is the right thing uh, for your project. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take an example that I uh, that I put together fairly recently um, for, a, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I realize that this is not terribly legible. Uh, we will have the slides put up uh, later. Uh, but this is a uh, this is an, a, a relatively simple example of a module MD YAML file, uh, which is the basic recipe for how you put together. Uh, this example is uh, based on Hub, which is a tool for interacting with GitHub uh, wraps Git. Uh, when I when when we started the mo modularity, uh, I'd been maintaining the stable version of this for some time, uh, and they hadn't done a stable release in well over a year. But there were but their upstream had lots and lots of really new, new features. So I decided I'll keep the stable release in main Fedora, and I'll make a module stream uh, for the latest. You know, they just it, just the Git snapshot. Uh, I'll release it about every month. Great. So. Um, the first thing I had to do there was I had to create a new branch, uh, and I had to request. I, I had to use uh, at the time it was Fed repo request, but now now Fed package actually has the capability to request from Relen uh, from Relenge a new branch for uh, for a, an RPM. So my my hub RPM I asked it for the pre-release. I asked for a pre-release branch. It took about uh, I think it was six hours turnaround to get, uh, and, and that was particularly long. But they were busy that day. Uh, and I got I got a new branch that I could com commit to. So I uh, on that branch, it treat it just like a regular diskit branch. You pre you prepare your spec file. You do uh, you uh, you can do fed package local and so on and so forth. The only thing you don't do is fed package build because that is going to get rolled up into the actual module build. So you can you push to the you push to the repo, but you don't actually need to do a traditional build. Then you request a module re repository in diskit, and you drop in it. This file, um, it's a, it's a. This is honestly, a, it's a very simple one, but they don't really get a whole lot more complicated either. Um, it's a very, it's a very simple format. So I'll walk, I'll walk through it quickly. Sorry, we're having a little trouble with the speakers. I hope that doesn't get picked up on the recording. Um, aside from the header information, which just says this is a module MD document for uh, format two. Uh, the mandatory feature uh, uh, entries are a summary, which is basically the same as an RPM uh, spec file summary. Uh, it's the same for a, de a description. 
For the license, uh, there are two kinds of uh, there are two kinds of licenses. Uh, you only need to specify what the license is for the module. Uh, during the, um, the module build service, this will automatically be populated with the license fields of any RPMs that are built with it as well uh, for uh, compliance purposes. The dependencies are... Uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to do that one last because that's the only complicated part in this, in this so I'll run through the rest. Uh, references are fairly easy. You just tell it for informational purposes. Profiles are sort of like uh, comps groups, except that, that instead of a cabal of, of people with commit privilege to comps, you can actually just say, I want to have these this set of profiles so that, uh, let's say my project has a server and a client. I can choose uh, to say, if you install module name uh, slash server, you get all the server bits. Install module name slash client, you just get the client uh, pieces. And that's uh, and the packager gets to define this, which is a significant usability improvement over comps. Um, API here um, is in Sorry, trying to okay. API here is uh, one of the more interesting concepts about this. Uh, it allows you to specify which output RPMs from the uh, from the module build you are treating as uh, acceptable for for general use. Thank you. Better. Um, the uh, the implication there is that any any uh, binary RPM that is produced from the module build that is not listed under API is therefore implicitly included and supported only in so far as it is used by this uh, by this module. So one of the classic problems we've had in Fedora, of course, is that anytime you package a piece of software you care about, you almost certainly have to package three or four dependencies that don't. This allows us a way to bundle those together in such a way that you can say. I only care about this for my package, uh, for my package, and uh, you shouldn't be using it for anything else. Uh, and then, lastly, is the components. These are the things that make up the module itself. Um, the name, f the name field, uh, here, uh, that reference that oh, that will reference uh, a, a a repository in the RPM's namespace of dist git. Uh, the ref is any commit ish. Uh, if you know the, the Git term, it's any it's any branch or specific uh, commit ID in that disk Git branch that you want to build from. So normally this will be a stream branch. Uh, in very rare cases, you might pin it on a particular commit if you know that uh, something got broken and you need to get you need to build against an older version, for example. So uh, I, I'll jump back now quickly to the uh, dependencies section. Uh, that uh, rationale is just a comment. Essentially, it's, a, it's reminding yourself why you put this particular uh, com component into the module. Uh, it's you know it, it's mostly useful for dependencies. Uh, I, this library is required in order to use this function in the uh, main repo or something like that. It's it's a it's a useful hint for future use, but it doesn't it doesn't get uh, considered as part of any uh, programmatic decision making. Thank you for answering. Uh, no, it can't, uh, and there are historical reasons for that. Um, that, 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 that's a vestige of the uh, modularity 1.0 effort uh, where since we were trying to modularize everything including the platform you had to justify and we made that a mandatory field because you had to justify why it got in there. Um, that I suspect we'll probably drop that when we get to 3 uh, of this format. Uh, so the dependencies uh, this will be a little bit non-intuitive the way it's written here but uh, I think you'll find once, it, once I explain it that it's really handy. Uh, so the build requires and the requires, uh, in almost all cases, they're going to be identical. Uh, and they'll indicate that you'll build for this platform and you'll run on this platform. Um, so uh, in, YAML, in YAML syntax, that is an array. And that is uh, the reason we specify an empty array is that that's a special case uh, for the module build service, which will tell it, build on any currently, uh, currently uh, active branch, uh, platform. So Fedora, right now, that would be uh, Fedora 28 and Rawhide. Um, in a little over a week, that'll be Fedora 28, 29, and Rawhide. Uh, eventually, we hope that will be Apple. Um, so uh, this just says, when I build this, try for everything. Uh, if you want to limit it, you just use YAML syntax, and you specify the specific releases that, you're, that you want to put it on. 
Um, as long as those two things are the same, uh, you'll, what you'll do is you'll, it, it, the MBS will automatically build for each of those in separately, and then it will, they'll all get pushed out into the uh, repositories. Um, the, other, the, the other feature of that is not quite ready, uh, but will be hopefully soon, which is if, you, if uh, it, is, it is possible to specify a different set of them and have it, uh, for example, build requires on F28, but be installable on 20, F28, 29, and, thir and Rawhide, uh, because you know that it has no dependencies on the actual platform. You just need somewhere to build, uh, some build route. Just, I would like people to notice that there is no dash in front of requires. It's, it's a list of build requires and requires. It's just okay. one item. Okay. So uh, the uh, comment from the peanut gallery, I'm uh, sorry, Petter, is that uh, there's a little trickiness in the uh, YAML here. This is actually uh, a single entry, and you can have multiple entries, but that's a complicated feature that I hope never, no one ever uses. Um, and many people, and people will get wrong. So, okay, so the question is, uh, what happens when you have module, uh, other modules besides platform in there, I think? If you have a bridge requires and requires for specified source, for example, but they don't, are not identical, how do you map to a bridge? Okay, um, those, uh, so the question is, what do you do, how do you map things when, they, when the build requires and requires aren't uh, exactly the same? Um, I'm going to gloss over that in this particular talk because I don't actually have uh, because it's a, it's a fairly complicated case and we anticipate that the majority of cases will just match and match them. Um, we probably will only support the uh, build one uh, build on once and run many places case. Uh, we pr I don't think it's likely that we will try to do the reverse. I, by policy, I suspect we will not allow both. Um, if, you, if you wouldn't have. Oh. Um, so once you have written that YAML file, that was the hardest part of this process uh, from the, uh, from the percent, uh, perspective of the packager. Uh, what remains is you fed package push, and then you fed package module build in that, uh, in that uh, modules uh, disk repository. And in this case, uh, you'll see that it submits builds 1978 and 1979. And the reason for that is because we, uh, I requested it be built on all available uh, modules, uh, all available platforms, and that was 28 and 29. Um, so that, I believe, is my ha uh, my half of this. So Mo uh, Mohan is going to talk to you about uh, how th how the tagging structure works and how that gets out to a, a repository. Um, so now about how to get these uh, modules into the repos. Uh, basically, Koji tagging. Um, how many of you guys know how a normal RPM uh, RPM tagging works in normal world? Okay, four people. That's great, actually. Um, so, if you go, um, so it's basically similar to whatever uh, the normal RPM tagging um, with slight differences, uh, uh, which I'll go through it right now. Uh, but we have three different. Okay, so uh, we have uh, three different life cycles. So one is rawhide, the other one is um, branched, and then released. Um, so we will uh, go through on each of them. Uh, first one is rawhide. Uh, basically, you uh, call fit package module build, and um, once you call that, uh, it will be tagged to uh, that uh, particular uh, release uh, rawhide uh, modular signing tag where it will wait for signing. And once the module gets signed, which, which means all the RPMs in the module, once they get signed, they will be tagged into the base tag of that release, which is F29 in the uh, current scenario. And the repo is generated every night in our uh, nightly composers. So, and it basically, when I say repo, we are actually having a um, sub package for a, uh, Fedora repos, which is a Fedora modular repos, back until a week ago, I guess. Yes, so in which you contain all the module information and uh, stuff like that, but uh, a week before, 
uh, we drop that and um, now each and every uh, variant uh, we have um, modularity enabled so guys who don't know about this and if you are using rawhide currently please go and try it out and please let us know how it is going <laughs> um, so that's how you can consume the repos uh, every night it will get updated with uh, um, modules um, then we have branched um, branched is a little bit different because we have both involved um, so how it works is once you build it it will get tagged into modular uh, updates candidate where the update is going to sit until you submit the update in Bodhi. Once you submit the update, it will be uh, uh, it will be tagged into a, a modular signing pending tag, where it will wait for uh, its signing, uh, and once it's signed, it will get into uh, tagged into modular updates testing pending. I think I got it right. Yeah. <laughs> um, once it's there. Uh, we release engineers and infra people will push updates every day um, so once uh, it is tagged into that uh, pending tag testing pending tag uh, when we push updates it will be tagged into modular uh, testing tags and uh, uh, modular updates testing tag where we generate the repos um, and uh, that we uh, you can use it as a the, uh, that's the testing repos that you can consume and once it meets the body requirements it will get tagged into the base tag and uh, from which uh, these repos are generated nightly again just as rawhide and you can uh, uh, get the stable repos from them and the released for the time sake it's similar to branched but we introduced um, a modular updates uh, tag um, as a stable tag so once it passes testing it will be uh, uh, once the um, body requirement is met it will be waiting in the modulus update pending tag and uh, once we uh, the push is completed it will tagged into modular updates and where the repos are generated and you can consume them um, uh, as the, the stable repos and uh, the differences from the normal RPM to current uh, the modularity is as uh, Stephen was saying, um, you can build modules for different releases at the same time based upon what your build requirements are. So it can generate multiple uh, builds. And the way that would work, work is um, with the same module build uh, command, you can get two different module builds, each pointing to different different releases. And based upon where the release is, it will go through that particular life cycle. If it is rawhide, it will just get signed, tagged, and the nightly compose will generate it. If it is branched, it will go through the entire body process. So that's how you, you get your repos. So that's it mostly. And uh, uh, I hope everyone will try modularity and l let us know how it is working out for you. But questions? So, uh, yeah. uh, I have a question about targets because uh, we found out that for development it would be good to have at least a target for the last module build. Uh, but I think they are pruned currently. Do you know the details about you know how long they stay in the Koji and we could let reuse them for scratch builds theoretically? It's a complicated issue, but um, the specific question is how the modular targets are pruned. So the question is about how do we prune modularity targets in Fedora. And uh, up until recently, that was a bug. Yes. Um, they they were aren't actually aren't... Uh, they're, not they're not supposed to be pruned. They were getting pruned. Okay. Um, right now, that uh, pruning is entirely turned off on them, and we're doing it manually if we know we know something is gone. But uh, uh, yeah, that, w that was just a bug. Uh, I, I think I fixed it probably two weeks back. So it should not be doing that anymore. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, excuse me, uh, was it the expected result if, uh, let's say, you built against uh, platform 28 and 29, and one of the build fails? 
what is the expected result if you build against 28 and 29 and one of them fails? Uh, pretty much the same if you built an R the RPMs individually against 28 and 29, one of them has failed. Uh, like, it, the up updates don't happen automatically, well, except for Rawhide. Um, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't fail, you won't have it available for, to push a boat, to create a Bodhi update for it. You just have to go fix it before you can do that. Yes. Uh, the question was: did, so Does that mean uh, you get a, a you have to do another build? Uh, yes. Uh, we don't really have a policy on whether or not you're we want to require you to build them both a second time or just allow or I mean you can always choose to modify for a single build to have it just build for the one platform by changing that uh, that build requires and requires field. Uh, so if you know that there's no reason to rebuild, you can. Do that, and then un then uncommit that after uh, you know that change after you have done the build. Um, so, what is uh, the policy about using the branch name in the model MD? Uh, my experience says that uh, then I need to do. Can you commit to take the new content of the branch, or you know what what is the policy behind reusing the same branch name? Oh, this is, this is not about policy, this is a technical question, and uh, uh, what he's asking about is why he needs to commit to the module again when he just updates the RPM. Okay, so the question is, why do I have to commit to the, uh, why do I have to do another commit to the module repo when I, uh, when I make a commit to the RPMs repo in order to rebuild them? Um, that is a question better asked of the, um, MB of the MBS maintainers, I'm not entirely sure Right. Well, I, yeah. I, I uh, so it, when the MBS does its build, it takes the it, it takes that branch and then it actually build it actually goes and looks up what is the real commit ID and it saves that as part of this build. And when you do a uh, and and the reason for this is uh, sometimes you have test flakes or mis or issues where the build fails that it, it it's recoverable. You just try it again and it would go. And so this ensures that it actually rebuilds the same thing it was trying to before. And even if you've made another commit, they don't want to change things out from under you while uh, while you're doing that. So it requires you to make a new commit in order for it to go and look up the latest ID and make sure and see if it matches. It's a really esoteric uh, technical problem. The question from Langdon was, didn't we push a change to make sure that wasn't the case anymore? And the answer was no. Let's take that discussion uh, to the uh, ex uh, to the expert help desk in the afternoon. So the question is, uh, if you build something that is available only as a module and not in the standard uh, traditional RPM repositories, will a user have to go and enable a module in order to see it? Uh, the answer is, it depends on whether or not you have requested, uh, and this is something we should have, probably should have covered in there, was uh, you have to request a default stream. And if you, def and if you pick, pick one uh, stream for, of a module to be the default in this on this platform and on this platform, then it will just simply show up as if it was, it, Similar to if it was enabled, there's only one minor technical reason why it's different than being enabled. Right. So yeah. So defaults are not visible in the build in the builder. Um, you always have to exp explicitly state that in the build requires if it's a if you, if you need it to build. So the question is, can I have a non-module, a non-module RPM depend on something that uh, that is in the default stream of a module? Uh, technically, you can. By policy, you say no. Can can a module? The question is, can a module depend on another module in build requires and requires? Yes, absolutely. Uh, 
I, I also kind of glossed over that because if they, when that list starts getting long and divergent, uh, it, the number of MBS builds that get fired off gets large. But um, so that, that would be one of those cases where you might, might see more than one list there is if you know that it depends on this version stream in this release and this version stream in that release. You can, spe you, you can actually dictate that in, this, in the file format, but uh, we are out of time, so I'm definitely not covering that today. Apparently we have a different we have different clocks, so I had time to say thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>